Hello and thank you for joining us for this week's episode of Pain Basket TV. We've got a jam-packed show this week with a whole new segment that we're adding to the show. Our tip of the week is all about composition. I've got a clever little trick that's going to help you improve the composition of your paintings and drawings. Then we're going to visit the website that's an awesome reference for all artists. And in our question of the week, if you're a watercolor artist, you'd want to hang around for that one. But now I think we should go and take a look and see what's happening at the paint basket. This week has been a very exciting week for us at the paint basket because we had our very first live show. We had guys joining us from all around the world to learn all about color mixing. We answered all the questions we could answer. It was a, almost a two hour show. It was absolutely brilliant. Now, if you did miss the show, don't stress. Here on the left hand side, you'll see there's now a new box which says webinar replays. Click the color mixing heading and you can go and watch the replay. This week, my favorite painting of the week is this ghost ship done by Newcom 88. Eugene, you've done a stunning job. I just love the atmosphere in this painting. Well done. If you haven't uploaded any paintings to the gallery, or if you don't know how, that's what our new segment is for. Let me show you how to do that. When you join the website, we automatically create a gallery for you, so ensure you're logged in before trying to add photos. Once logged in, you'll notice that the login box has been replaced with various icons. The one we're interested in today is this photo icon over here. This is the link to your gallery page. If you click on it, you're taken to your gallery. Inside your gallery, you can go and create as many albums as you want. Let's say one for your oil paintings and maybe another for your pencil drawings. You do that by clicking on the new album button. You can then customize your new album by giving it a descriptive name like Loopy's Paintings. You can also add a description to the album if you like. Scrolling down, you can customize your album even further if you want to, but I usually just use the default settings. We can now add our new album to the gallery by clicking the submit button. There we go, our shiny new album. Now let's go and add some photos to it. There are two ways that you can do that. This button is used to add one photo at a time. And this button we use to add multiple photos at the same time. For now, I think let's just add one. I always give the photo a descriptive title usually the title of the artwork. I then also add a description or some notes to the photo. Now we can go and select the photo itself on the computer and submit it. If you're uploading a large photo or if you're on a slow internet connection you'll have to be patient because it could take a while to upload. After the photo is finished uploading we can now also add it into our posts on the forum. To do that, you would need to select this funny looking BBC embed code over here and copy it. Ok, let's go and create a new post and add our photo to it. Inside the post, you can simply paste the embed code at the place where you want your photo to appear. Like that. Now, when somebody reads the post about your new painting, they can go and take a look at it at the same time. I can't wait to see some of your paintings in your gallery. Now, I think let's go and take a look how One Point Perspective can improve the composition of our paintings. Let's take a look at this photo and see if we can improve the composition a bit. The background seems fine, but it looks like Rusty the cow is about to step on our toes. So let's use one point perspective and move him up a bit. Sorry Rusty, but you won't be needing your shadow for a while. One point perspective works like this. The further an object is away from us, the smaller it will appear. 
The point where the object becomes so small it disappears on the horizon is called our vanishing point. So for us to move Rusty around, we'll first need to find the horizon. The horizon is always at eye level, which seems to be around here. Now let's pick a point on the horizon. It doesn't matter where. This is going to be our vanishing point. Now let's draw two lines from the vanishing point towards Rusty. Let's make the one line touch the top of his head and the other the bottom of his front foot. Again, it doesn't matter which points on the object you choose. We can now move Rusty anywhere along our perspective lines, resizing him proportionally to ensure that the points on his head and foot remain on our perspective lines. What we're actually doing is moving Rusty backwards and forwards in our picture while maintaining the correct perspective. The minute we have Rusty at the correct distance, we can then shift him horizontally to exactly where we need him, make him do a U-turn, and there we have a much more interesting picture. Thanks Rusty, you can have your shadow back now. <coughs>
picking up your paint, do this. Go one, two, three, four. And mix it in there. So if you get yourself into that habit of saying one, two, three, four, and then doing that, and clean your brush in between, shake it off. One, two, three, four. Mix it in. Okay, so now I've got five drops of water plus let's wash our brush to make sure there's no other anything on it. Dry it off. And let's let's put down that color over there like that. Okay. Wash our brush again. Okay, so now let's say, for example, it's a week down the line, I need to get that color again. Now I know, it's simple, follow the recipe. One, two, three, four, five drops of water, and it was two turns of four. Right? Shake off the brush to get the same amount of water in it. And you see I'm using exactly the same brush as I did last week. So that I know I've got exactly the same amount of water that the brush can hold. One, two, three, four. Wash the brush, shake it off. One, two, three, four. Wash that in. Now, it's going to give me exactly the same color. See that? So, yes, you can get repeatability with watercolors. All you need to do is count the drops and count the turns. So you're picking up the same amount of paint and the same amount of water and write it down. And again, you can make yourself the same little laminated cards like we did with the oil painting. So, yeah, not a problem. That was actually one of the questions that I answered in this week's live show. If you want to go and take a look at all the other questions we answered, on the left hand side click on that color mixing link. Also in the resource box there you will find a really handy PowerPoint which will help you with your color mixing in future. That unfortunately is all we've got for this week. I'll see you on the forum.